you, you know what? At one point when I was in Sweden, I I um, I uh, I went back to studying, you know. But at the same time, I was in the rug group, you know. So I was doing both things. So uh, 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 and I went to like a music school too at one point, and uh, learned how you know everything about music that I needed to learn. And then after that, I continued with the rug group, and I went to like a, a, a study in uh, computer program, you know. Because I was like, just in case it doesn't happen in the music. But at one point I was like, you know what? I left my family. I left everything I had to, for my dream to make it. So I had to make a choice. Either I'm going to do this or that. I was like, you know what? I, went, I came for music. I'm going to continue doing music. So I stopped everything else. And I just become like an obsessed human being on music, writing, trying to figure it out, trying to know people, trying to beg for opportunities, anything, anything, just to, to make my dream come true, you know? So, then, uh, yeah. Well, I was going to say then, how did you go from Sweden to the U.S.? How did you end up yeah, in well, the well, U.S.? Yeah, yeah, well, the thing is, like, after, after some time in Sweden, I, I started having success, you know, because once I got the chance, I made hits, you know, because I, I just felt, I, I knew that I knew how to make hits, you know? Uh, so at that point, I had the great success in Sweden. I had few number ones and uh, my financial life became better, you know, like I could survive, you know, and, and go. I remember I, one summer I was in Morocco and, and I told my sister, you know what, I, I think I'm going to go to America and start again from scratch. She was like, what? You've been fighting for so long and now you have a better life and everything and you're going to go start again from zero. I was like, but. I left you guys, I left my family to make it globally, not to make it in Sweden. Uh, she was like, okay, well, it's, it's a good point. I was like, I, I want to, I don't want, I, I don't ever want to regret that I never tried my best, you know? So I said, yes, let's go. And I went to America and America was tougher, <laughs> you know, like almost impossible. I was going to say, like, you're finally surviving and you have some money in your pocket in Sweden. And then you come <laughs> here and it's like, you got slapped down again. Bah, bah. And, and it's, it's uh, tougher, much tougher, because in Sweden, people can, uh, in America, they, they, like the a and and stuff, they can be ruthless. They'd be like, this, this is, you know, like music is bad, like you're, you're, you're bad kind of thing, you know? And it, it hurts, but like at the same time, I knew, because in my head, in my head, while I was doing the music, I always compared myself to the charts. And I say... And I always felt like oh, my songs are better than the songs in the charts. <laughs> you know, like that was my thing. I'm better than this producer. I'm better than, you know, just like before, before I made it. So, so that was my mentality. I was like, if I get a chance, I will show, I will show the world what I can do. And I kept fighting, 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 you know, and uh, until that one moment where uh, life changed, you know, where I was about to give up and, and, and my wife convinced me to try three more months, you know, for luck. And uh, we were we were living only on the air mattress, me and her. That's all we had in one apartment, one bedroom apartment, you know. Because all my money from Sweden, we just went to pay rent and eat and that and that to survive, you know. So and then until we were broke, 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 you know. And the three last three more months, uh, you know, uh, and I borrowed money from all my brothers and my everybody. So and, and she convinced me to try three more months, and we borrow money from from her sister. For those three, if nothing happens, he said, you, okay, you can always go back to, to Sweden and you have a name. And it's not the end of the world because I was crying, 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 crying after watching a Selena movie with JLo, you know, and uh, I was very emotional. I was like, this is not going to happen for the first time in my life where I thought it might not happen. That one time. And I needed her. So she, she was there to convince me to do three more months and three more months changed my life. Absolutely. And how, how did it change your life? Like, what was that okay, so, <laughs> moment? <laughs> Two major things happened. Two major things happened in that, that, that period of time. One of them is uh, Epic Record asked me to do a remix for J-Lo, for a Spanish song. So I did, I did it, and I went to, uh, to, the, you know, went to the, the office of Epic Records. I played them the, the remix. They said, we like it, but her husband, Mark Anthony, did the uh, uh, salsa remix so we're not going to use your remix i'm sorry so i was like can i play you play you my music what i do they're like yeah yeah play play so i started playing song after song after song and then they were like you know what maybe you should uh, uh, try to work with this girl called cat de luna that we just signed 
I was like, I can't. They, they, and they asked me, what time, when can you do it? So I was like, today. <laughs> you know? so they were like, they were laughing. They were like, okay, wait, wait. One day. So I just scheduled me with her for like five days and I did five songs, one song a day. Pam, 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 pam. And uh, we, you know, we happened manager and Kadruna contacted the, 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 the head of Epic, you know, the president. And we came to play the songs. And uh, while he was listening to the first song, in the middle of the first song, he said, stop you know i stopped and he brought the whole label to to listen to the songs i was so nervous broke and nervous so 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 he was like stop i stopped he was like you're a genius i was thank you so i continued playing the music he was listening listening and then after the second song he, he told me come here he told them this is my guy from now on everybody read one they started applauding and they paid me for the whole album to do the whole album he said you didn't just do songs for her you did he created the sound, not just songs. And uh, that, that, that first song, he put it out called Why Not? He became number one in 36 countries. I got paid for the whole album. So I, now I had money to survive for two years without thinking about the stress. How am I going to survive? It was just about the music. And while, while I had that hit uh, called Why Not, um, my, my, manage, my ex-management called me, told me, hey, we want you to meet this girl. And I told them, this is my chance to work with big stars because I have a hit, you know? And I told them, I is she signed? They were like, no, she just got dropped. I was like, but are you serious? Like, I'm, I'm waiting for her to call me about Beyonce or Rihanna. <laughs> you call me about a girl. But they were like, just meet her five minutes, five minutes. She's a good writer. Uh, you know, she's, you know, like you guys meet and see if you like her. If you don't like her, you don't have to work with her. And she signed to us to please help. So I was like, okay, I'll go meet her for five minutes. And hi, Red One. Hi, Lady Gaga. And then I was like, okay, seeing her cool. I liked her aura, you know, I remember like, like yesterday. And we were talking music, talking, talking, talking. And I, I was like, this girl is very smart. She knows her music. She knows music. She loves rock. She loves 80s. She loves everything that I love, you know? So I was like, you know what? Let's go to the studio. She's like, okay, let's do it. So we went. And uh, that's where magic happened. Made in, made in Lady Gaga. Everything happened that changed my life. Could you tell, you know, like you wanted the Beyonce, you wanted the Rihanna. Could you tell, you know, right away, like Lady Gaga, she's an unknown, but she has something here. Absolutely. I, that, that's what I felt. I remember going back home. I told my wife, it's crazy. I told her like, it, this girl, even if she doesn't happen, I will work with her. Even if nothing happens as an artist, I will continue working with this girl because she's special. I remember that like yesterday. And as a matter of fact, uh, when I started working with her, I played her music, what I was doing with her, for, for a friend called Efe and Akon. Because Akon, Efe introduced me to this guy, Akon. He's the biggest artist in the world. So for almost like a year, we've been uh, uh, bugging Akon. You have to see this girl. She's the next Madonna. She's the next Madonna. She's the next Madonna. Like every time. And he's like, okay, okay, I'll check her out. Just calm down, you know? So... Uh, more and more and then we we that's what happened like after i worked with her for uh for uh we did the out like pretty much all, the whole album and akon i remember he told me wait with the songs don't play them for nobody i will come and we walk the songs to jimmy ivin you know and then we uh we walked to jimmy ivin and we play him the songs he he loved the songs he loved the songs and uh and uh, but he asked akon would you support her on tour would you support her on, on this this and that and uh it's all absolutely i'll you know, it'll be like my artist, like this, this, and that. And then that's how it, uh, you know, that's how it happened. And of course, Martin Kirzenbaum, who was the head of international, uh, put some some personal favors in uh, Sweden and Canada to tell the police push this girl from me. Because in America, we, we released just this, but it would not take off. It wouldn't. It was their number in iTunes at that time. is like 30, not between the 74. It would never go up. It, would, it just stayed there because they never pushed it really. But Martin pushed those relationships in Sweden and, and, and Canada, and it was number one, number one, you know, in both countries. And then country after country, number one, number one. And then the whole world, it was number one. Then America pushed it in the UK, boom. And then a, a, new, a new star was born. Poker face, bad romance. I mean, <laughs> it's crazy. could you I mean, tell? I mean... Uh, right. Could you, you could just tell like these were hits, like these were mega yes. hits. 
you know, you know what, like what, what we had, me and her was like, you know, in life, there is some combination that they just work like Michael and uh, uh, Quincy Jones, you know, like there's some, some combinations. They are magical, like Tim, Justin Timberlake and, uh, and Timberland, you know, right. that, that's how, that's what was happening between me and her. Like it was, it comes natural. Like the songs come so easy. We just have fun. Uh, you know, we respect each other's talents and it's just, just perfection and what's happening. That's why those songs are the most successful, you know?